President Joe Biden announcing new rounds of sanctions on Russia this morning, which included downgrading Russia's trade status and banning imports of Russian goods like vodka and diamonds. These are all attempts to put more economic pressure on Russian President Vladimir Putin, who is now desperately trying to control what information gets through to Russian citizens about the ongoing invasion of Ukraine. Blocking Facebook last week, saying today it would also buy on Instagram and will look to classify parent company Meta as, quote, an extremist organization. With this information crackdown, there's a real question of what Russian citizens are hearing and thinking about what's transpiring. Finley Muratova is a freelance writer for The Nation. Their latest piece is titled The Tightening Grip of Censorship in Russia. And Finley Muratova joins me now. It's really good to have you here. Hi, thanks um, for inviting me. I'm so glad you're here because you are in a sort of unique position, I think, to kind of traduce Hi. these worlds. Um, I should note that your father uh, is a very legendary journalist <laughs> in Russia. He founded, right, Nova Gazeta, yes. um, which won the Nobel Prize last year. It was the independent, uh, one of the most important independent pieces of media there. You're a college student here now. Yeah. What is your sense? First of all, just as a background, how much people your generation, like young Russians, like my sense is it's like here in terms of the use of Instagram, YouTube. Oh, yeah. Is that how they get information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah. And is that how curated that and how much can you get outside of sort of state control through those channels? If you have access to Instagram or um especially Instagram, I guess, but Twitter as well, uh, you can pretty much get whatever information as long as you know where to search. I think the only issue is um, English. Uh, not everybody is proficient, uh, but I actually don't think I have any friends who are my age in Russia who like don't speak English. Uh, but a lot of folks that I'm surrounded by uh, they also know how to seek out information. So they would know how to seek out Nova Gazeta or Medusa or TV Rain or other uh, free media outlets that are not state owned. Um, so this is going to be like seismic. I mean, forget about the politics for yeah. just for a second. I mean, if you came into the U.S. tomorrow and said like, oh, Instagram's going away, <laughs> YouTube, I mean, they're talking about YouTube possibly next. And I know it's oh, yeah. very popular. Like that, this is going to be massively disruptive for, for, for folks, right? I mean, it's going to be massively disruptive, I think, in large part because um, it's my understanding that what they want is for people to focus their attention on television because the channels are state owned and it's the easiest way to push propaganda into the masses. And when you have social media, you have um, people who have access to diverging opinions and you can't have that when you're a dictatorship or you're trying to establish a very powerful dictatorship because you need for everybody to follow a single party line. And how do you push that? You push that first through a single medium, which is television in this case. So you've, the, the, the question of Russian public opinion here is always a dicey and difficult one. I mean, right. in, in even a, a, you know, in a very liberal democracy, public opinion is very contested. And what do people really, what do Americans think about X? I don't know. They think a lot of different things, right? <laughs> so in Russia, I mean, we've, we've seen incredible acts of courage in protests. Um, We've seen a, a Russian pilot today getting up and saying this. this yes, that's this, really cool. A really amazing gets up and says this war is a crime. Yes. Um, and and, the, and the, the people on the flight applaud. What is your sense, just in the people you're in contact with, of what their understanding is of what's happening? Russians know that what's happening is a war, but they're not allowed to call a spade a spade. And... No, Russians do not want war. Here's the thing, and I, I think I wrote that in a different piece for The Nation. Um, I think it was called We Are Your Future, We Don't Want Your War. We were taught that war is bad. USSR bore such horrible casualties in World War II. We were always told that war is horrible, war is evil. And yet somehow Putin's government went through with the Chechen wars and then an attempted annexation of Georgia and the list goes on, right? So to me, it's kind of like so hypocritical. And people, especially of my generation, know that it's hypocritical. I think it would be very hard to find a young Russian my age who supports this invasion, mm -hmm. who supports the war. Um, it's much harder with older generations, though, because a lot of them have been exposed to Russian television for a longer time. And a lot of them have unfortunately 
you know, form their perception of the world based off of Russian television. Our propaganda is awfully powerful. I can't even convey to you. It's it's the best. I have to say, I've watched Russian state TV and particularly the big primetime show where yes. they're all in like the. It looks like a big oh, like yes. fighting. Solovyov, yes. Yeah, Solovyov. I love him. It's well, it's <laughs> it's the it's the it's some of the best produced TV that I've ever seen. I mean, it's like it's very yeah. well produced television. Yeah. Um, I guess the question to you is also what this means for folks that oppose the government and, and, and whether there will be essentially this mass exodus of precisely the kinds of people that were there to resist against what Putin's trying to do. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Um, I believe in the people. I do believe that people are going to keep coming out. And I have to say, the people who are protesting in Russia right now are my heroes. I've protested in Russia before in what I would call gentler times. Mm, mm. And uh, even that was traumatic. So I have no idea how people are doing it right now. And oh, my God. Um, but I really hope that people are going to keep coming out and keep protesting. But the truth is, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in a week or in a month's time. So truly, your guess is as good as mine. But just because future is uncertain doesn't mean that we have to or need to stop fighting for it. I think that it's even more important to actually go on. Um, well, I'm so glad that you came tonight. And that was really, really Thanks. helpful.